She got a broken neck. Back. Uh, oh, back. But they're all attached. Yeah. Same thing. Um, my neck was an issue before, and that's what people like still think it is. Is it because you have an extra large head? Um, no. Did you bring that up to the PT? My head is not big. <laughs> <laughs> you should want your head to be big, because like that's what? actually y'all know actually like pictures and in, in in TV movies, it's the people with the great big head. Most attractive. Yeah, you actually have a tiny head. That's weird. Tiny little pebble head. That's okay with me. I don't want a big head, but <laughs> that, no, that's not the problem. Um, my neck is still whatever. It's not perfect, but um, it's my back, my lower back, my lumbar, and I don't know exactly what it is. They don't know exactly what it is. Um, I have an appointment after this for the doctor to check to see if he wants to give me an MRI. My spine looks normal, but... Um, so you had an x-ray? Yeah, I had an x-ray. Um, you know, PC, primary care physician, referred me to a sports medicine doctor, had two sessions with her over the course of three weeks, and then when it didn't get better the second session, she just told me I need to stop squatting and deadlifting until it gets better, and then slowly start incorporating weights again. And I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't even align with what I know about physical therapy, because I've met with a physical therapist before who know lifting, like Emily. And, um, yeah, you should be going through movements as specific as possible without irritating it. And, you know, uh, I don't want to speak too much of it because I don't study this stuff and I don't have the credentials. But that's just not doing anything. And just, like, she's giving me these little tiny, like, yoga, old people stretch stuff. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, that's not going to – you're covering your ass because you don't want – It's a safe route. Yeah, prescribe me anything more, any more rigorous or more specific. Right. It's I don't if I don't do anything, I don't get worse. Right? Probably. Yeah. You know, chances are. Yeah. So. But you, yeah, but you ain't gonna get better either. That opens like a whole bunch of bags of of why I wanted to uh, chat today. Like one, um, what physical therapy looks like and taking care of yourself as a competitive lifter. But two, maybe more importantly, um, I guess like the dark side of competing. Uh, and how a lot of people, and you're you're pretty open with it, and do it in a decent way where you're not bitching, because there's there's definitely like a powerlifting culture where people are just bitching about their pains all the time, yeah. right? Like they walk into the gym, or maybe you're even at lunch with a powerlifting friend, and you say, "Hey, how are you doing?" And like, "Wow, my hamstring yeah. and my shoulder," and like no one asked, but I was asking how your day was going, and I, well, I had RPE three, and I. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's that person that's always talking about their pains, but then at a higher level, often people are faking it, ignoring it, which I think is twofold. One is maybe a little bit of image stuff to, to on, on the online persona to look invincible. Um, but then the positive, or I think what might be for a lot of people is, is you can't act in pain all the time because then you're going to be in pain all the time, right? Like some of it's a mental, uh, establishment, to tell yourself, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be healthy. So then you act like you're fine and healthy as a recovery. And I do think there's merit in that as well. Because um, if you wake up every day, like all by yourself, you're wincing, you're probably going to be in pain more, right? So if you try to act normal, you try to tell yourself internally, I'm going to be better, I'm going to get healthy, I'm going to be better, I'm going to be healthy. Chances are that path is going to be there more likely. It's almost like a manifestation. For sure. And and just, yeah, right? If I'm always focused on my knee because my knee hurts and I'm staring at it all day, it's going to fucking hurt. Yeah. But if you start to walk and do shit, you're going to... Don't less... treat it like, you right. know, it's, it's the end all be all. I think it's twofold that the elite athletes have to kind of ignore their stuff for their own mental sake. Um, and then for, com- for competitiveness, And then too. some of it is the gamemanship. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes you more open about it or not care? about the gamemanship um i guess it doesn't really change if i was completely healthy like i understand there are numbers games to play but if someone else is stronger than me no matter like what i'm doing whether i'm hurt or whether i'm like the healthiest and strong if i'm the strongest i've ever been and someone will someone is stronger than me what am i going to do any differently yeah. when, when the when the day comes like i just I don't know. That's always um, something that I've, I guess that's the mentality I've had going into meets and viewing my competition in general. It's that like this strength takes time to build and it has to show up on the platform uh, legally as in like making sure you're hitting depth and all those things. Um, But a lot of the times if someone else is succeeding, like that doesn't really change how I'm approaching 
my training because I'm always gonna going to try my hardest. I'm always going to do my best, put my best foot forward. Um, if I see someone else, you know, not that they don't inspire me or motivate me, but like I'm already doing my best. And so whether someone else is doing better than me or worse, I'm, I'm it doesn't change. Yeah, they're trying to game a game that's just not there. And I don't really know when that became a thing because I've always thought similar to you. And that's why I don't love competing in powerlifting. But like, like basketball is a thing, right? If you're in the playoffs and you scout a team and I know Sebas' left hand's hurting. He, yeah. he hurt his wrist. In basketball, I'm gonna force him to dribble with his left hand. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go, not gonna go slap his left hand. Like there's yeah. lines to it. But if I know he's got his his left hand or his left ankle is a little weird, or we're playing volleyball and we know that you know the left setter's got a busted wrist, I'm I'm, I'm fucking launching the ball at her yeah. face all day long. Yeah. Um, and and I like that game and chip. I I enjoy that. Or even if they're not injured, I just know Sebas can't dribble well with his left hand. I like being able to be tactical and attack weak points. Powerlifting, there's no such thing. Yeah, what are you going to do? Like, add 50 more pounds onto your squat because yeah. someone else did? Or, or do something lame. Like, this is lame. They go in the back room and be like, hey, Abby, hope your back doesn't hurt. Like, you could play no, games like yeah. that. And that is a thing. <laughs> yeah. um, and I enjoy some of that gamemanship, too. But in powerlifting, it's, like, actually hurt. It's actually dangerous. Mm-hmm. So I don't really do it. But basketball, I might do it. You know, like, I know he, again, CBAS is my example of my shit talk. <laughs> really bad shooting day the day before i'd maybe walk by and say something like man hope those shots drop today you know like just to make them start thinking about how we shoot get in their head yeah i like that i really do but in powerlifting for some reason i don't like it just because we we are all kind of doing the same thing like yeah. you said like i don't want to beat someone because they in powerlifting because they have a hurt ankle i don't want to beat someone in powerlifting because they got the flu right i want to beat someone because my total out total their total their best total. Ever. Their best at their yeah. healthiest. Which like Because then otherwise there's always an asterisk. Yeah. You know? That that sucks. Right. And it's uh I already know that and I, I, I believe the same thing too. If I were to if I were going head to head against someone and they weren't feeling their best or something happened and I'm like, Well, I know yeah. it's like okay, but that doesn't feel good. And it's like, yeah, on game day, you know, you did show up and you know you didn't have those situations, so it's okay to give yourself credit. But it's like, yes, but I wanted to compete against this person, like to the best of our both abilities. And so there's this competitive side that showed up this time around with this injury and this nationals that I usually don't have, which like I was talking maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know. But uh I was talking to a friend about this and I'm like there are just some competitors that I have going into this meet that I know I can beat, but they are like I, it's it's maybe like two of them that I have in mind. And um, throw the names out. I there. know I could. I know I. I can know I can. You know, t- like place higher than them. But if I don't compete at this meet, they're gonna place one place higher than they would have if I did, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't want them to think they're better than me. <laughs> I don't want them to get the chance, the satisfaction of even like, I did place higher technically, even though maybe in the back of their head, as good competitors, they might be like, you know, but I know yeah, she, I wasn't, wasn't there. Well, yeah, she wasn't there. They're going to think that at first a little bit, and then yeah. that part's going to fade. It's and they're like, fade. I placed whatever, you know. Yeah, like, they're yeah, going to mar- For the rest of their lives. Marvel yeah. in that, and I'm just like, and then my friend was like, you know, it's it's true. It might, it might be true. It might happen. But there's so much time for you to prove to them by so much, like how much more, how much better you are. And I'm like, I understand that too. So I guess the part that bothers me is like, I just need them to stay down. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. I don't know where that came from. But like, like <laughs> it's 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 actually kind of relieving though because I am not a competitive person. I, if I am beating, someone I, winning, I just heard something different. I know, I know. So, but that's what I mean. Like typically. I like to stay humble because I know, like, if I'm at the top, I will. When I do lose, I don't want egg in my face. I don't like that feeling of yeah. like, in your face, I beat you. Next time, it's like someone else beats me, and then I'm like, okay, well, I can't talk anymore. I have to cover my face. It's kind of like oh, embarrassing. I kind of rubbed it in their face last time, and now I lost. So like, I don't like that. But in this case, I'm just like, man, I don't want them to think they're better than me. What do you think? Because uh, obviously, you can compete and be in you know nine out of ten shape. But what do you think of the top ten? I just made that number up. But top 10 at Nationals, how many do you think are feeling beat up or dealing with shit? Oh, man. Um, it's it's definitely, like, maybe 50% or more. Yeah. You know, like... and I would say 60, 70. You're right. I have something that's pissing them off. I've never done a meet that something wasn't pissing me off. There's, there is... Okay, when you say something's pissing you off... 
like a bum shoulder that made me adjust my training. Okay, like, so like something, something's happening to my body that I couldn't train exactly how I wanted to. Physically, like yeah, physically, pain, physically, physically, pain or injury or something yep. uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's the difference, especially like any, even people com- uh, getting ready for local meets, they will start to get like as their fatigue for increases sure. and all that stuff. Uncomfort or tired yeah. or weak. Things, yeah, not that. Start to show. Not that. I mean, yeah. like. Something so bad yeah. that happened for weeks that I have to adjust my yeah. training. And those things do happen. Um, the one that I don't like or pe- is where people complain about, like, they are they are technically healthy. It's just things aren't moving the way they want to. Right. They feel mm, entitled. They feel entitled to the certain weight that they should be lifting or it's, like, not as close to their PRs as they expected. So they're like, eh, this was okay. I'm like, you, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, That's this, part of the process. This moved well. You should, like, what are you, I don't know. That's that's the entitlement that comes through with like, um, even when people are injured, like if you have a really, I don't know, it it it, it changes depending on situation. But there is a, some level of entitlement sometimes when it comes to like being injured or just the situation they're in going into a meet and they're upset. It's like you just feel entitled to be able to lift more than you can right now. Yeah. Like, who says you need to be or lack or, of perspective, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, if you're in a high fatigue state. And you're in the middle of a taper. Yeah, yeah. 500 is going to move like 520, but that's kind of the goal. Because yeah. then hopefully we take some fatigue away and then you move faster on the game day. Yeah. So people get in their heads a lot. But, yeah, they just don't know. Um, yeah, there are definitely more people probably injured and stuff. And I understand people hiding their injuries and whatnot, things that aren't going right. But I don't really care. You could do whatever you want with my information. I'll share it. Like, just because um, I'm pretty open and I try to, t- like, it's a fine line between whining and complaining and then sharing your journey as well. Yeah. And I posted that a story yesterday talking about like, you know, I'm slowly coming back a little bit. Um, but I've also posted some stories about wanting to quit and like, those are real and it's very like, it's deeply emotional and it's a, it's a big struggle. You know, it's like whatever I do share, there's more going on uh, underneath it. But, um, I, I share these not expecting support, not that I don't expect support, but more people responded and shared their stories and um, showed their support more than I than I thought. And they enjoy and like the transparency um, and they think it's inspirational or motivational and it always catches me off guard. I'm like, oh, I OK, I could see that. I just didn't I didn't post this with the intent. Yeah, of yeah. Like, you know, what? I'm going to inspire some people so, today. So but gonna, yeah, now they don't feel alone. Yeah, but I don't I don't, I'm not doing it to paint this picture like, oh, I'm, I'm an inspiring person. I'm just telling you my journey. Yeah. And like, oh, I look back and people are inspired or motivated. I'm like, oh, okay, I could see that. Yeah, like, and the cool. whole part of the journey is in upwards, sadly. Right, and I, I, I threw that disclaimer in there as well. And I'm like, I'm trying to make sure. Um, I'm not like, you know, I went against what my PT said, and now I'm feeling better. And then maybe next day I'm like, oh, actually, it got worse. Yeah, you know, like, I don't want to do that either. So I had all these disclaimers. Like, I'm not telling you to go against medical professional recommendation. And I'm not expecting this to just be up from here. Right. You know, so. I think that when you, with it, as an athlete, I'm uh, bunny ears here. Um, mm-hmm. um, I think that when you deal with um, medical professionals, to, to educate them on I did, yeah. like where you are and what your support looks like and what and what your baseline is because they don't know they're only they see you f- you know when you're fucked up and not when you're you know at your best and they don't they probably deal with gen pop which gen pop can't and, deadlift 430 and not even gen pop. most of the time they're dealing with with people who have injuries that came from not ever doing anything, mm-hmm. you know, from being, yeah, from not being active, right, from not being active. So they don't, they don't necessarily know unless they have that background themselves. Right. Which is really disappointing. And I was like, she should feel disappointed as a sports medicine doctor in this day and age. And she's not an old person. Uh-huh. So it's like, you have no excuse really um, to tell me to like, not do those movements anymore. It's like, you didn't even ask what movements hurt. What kind of pain is it? Is it, right. you know, it's a, um, why you didn't ask about me being able to goblet squat, but not me able, being able to back squat without any com- discomfort. Yeah. And that should be a differentiation that like means something. It's like, okay, maybe you can continue to do these squatting movements. If you know, goblet squats don't hurt, they don't recreate the pain, but you don't want to detrain because you are a competitive athlete, mm-hmm. uh, four weeks out from a national competition. And I do want you in your best shape. Like didn't consider or mention any of those things. Oh. 
extreme, obviously, because we're loading such extreme weights, even compared to like a pro soccer player. You know, they're not going to be squatting triple body weight, although obviously they train very hard and have other issues. I do wonder what the medical school or background looks like when something becomes sports med. Right. That's a good question. Right. Like a PT, then a sports PT. Yeah. You would think the sports PT would start to talk about like posterior anterior loading graded loading yeah and understand versus yeah a regular pt that's doing like they do just need to be pain free because they got to go bring their kid to kindergarten yeah, i understand it, that mm-hmm. here in sacramento we do have some you know sports medicine deal with professional teams and you know the way the kings yeah. with the but even cats, some of the, whatever. some of them no, not all of them have the same qualifications yeah, yeah for some, sure and people have like worked with basketball players and said the same thing like yeah. oh throw uh throw it up in elevation rest it ice it yeah you know like you need to apply some resistance if it's your ankle or something even like a light resistance yeah. band with like um, obviously depending on the injury yeah. yeah broken bones right. are different but light strains most tight muscles most spasms yeah we need some blood flow right there's there's a fine line between, you know, pushing and and when you talk about these things, people who don't understand, like haven't been in the gym, um, won't understand what this weight means and what percentages. Right. Mean. So, yeah. You're, yeah, she accused me of saying that I told her 10 pounds was lifting 10 pounds hurt. I'm like, that doesn't make sense, because if you understood the gym, 10 pounds yeah, is like what this you're plate. Doing. So, like, that's not if you knew what that plate looked like, you're like, well, that's probably not hurting her. They've been lifting it. And I'm, yeah, and I'm like, the bar itself is 45 pounds. But um, yeah, I just, it was a little disappointing. And I I initially wasn't, su- was expecting that response from my primary care physician. Mm-hmm. But I was, I was given some hope when she referred me to the sports medicine doctor, right. who I've never met with one before. So it was exciting. And then she does this, and I'm like, okay, never mind. And then that's mind. the whole other issue, right? Is that the, medical system set up that through your insurance you have to go through this system or through this company or through this brand and they may not have experts you know like our friend emily who understands lifting and understands loading but then if she doesn't thing now and your insurance is all fucked up yeah it doesn't work yeah and you can't blame emily for making money but your insurance isn't covering that yeah and i ended up um because i've done probably three or four different rounds of, of pt and i ended up paying to go to a sp- right. sport specific place right. out of pocket mm-hmm. which is yeah which is not cheap yeah. which is not cheap but like i don't think ever have gotten better right and it's it's worth it you know it's a cost that you have to pay but if you're an athlete or even like I have a client who is a runner she met with the runners specialist mm-hmm. to take a look at her knee and her anatomy or physiology whatever um and that's something that a general you know physical therapist at Kaiser is not going to help fix. No. Because, like, they don't understand the extremes of the sport that she does, which is, like, runs, like, 12 to 20 miles, you know, in a day type of thing. So um, I'm sure they would just tell her to stop running, too. Right. Yeah. Everyone would just say stop. Right. And that's just so short-sighted. Yeah. And even running, right? Like, say you even do long-term running or, or, or lifting, as you know, with your neck, which has gotten better. The chances that it's actually the activity that you do is is so low. Mm -hmm. Because when you're actually doing a heavy squat session, even you, who's at the highest level, you're actually under the bar like three minutes? Right. Right? Probably less. Most lifts are under 11 seconds. Right. So 11 times, you know, 21 if you're doing a three by seven. Yeah. Right. The chances that it's the bar is probably pretty low. Like, there's a chance. Mm-hmm. But bodybuilding and powerlifting, statistically, all the data you want to look at are the two like safest sports on the planet. So the chances are that you're fucking up your shit. It's probably how you're sitting. Probably how you're not moving. Probably how your bed. Mm-hmm. Pro- all these other facts. You're laying in bed for eight hours. If that shit's fucked, that's probably what's fucking you up, right? Yeah. And it's probably the same with the running. Like, yeah, there's for sure such thing as stress fractures and repetitive injuries, right? Golfers get it. Powerlifters get it. Runners get it because you're doing the same motion over and over. And if there's a little dysfunction, whether it be in your system or your body or, or your form there, yeah, okay. You're repeating it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll beat you down over time. But even that, like just stopping it, it's not going to fix it because that dysfunction still is there. So right. then when you, when you go back to do it, Right. Of in any form, it's going to flare up. So say you're running 10 miles a week, you stop all that, but then you start walking five miles a week, that dysfunction's there, it's going to get injured. Yeah, again. like your your bike gear is broken, you stop using it. Well, it doesn't mean it's not still yeah. broken. Yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. broken. Yeah, Try yeah, using just, it again. Yeah, you just didn't notice it's broken because <laughs> you, you didn't ride. Yeah. yeah, you didn't fix the part that's yeah. broken. Yeah, it so. doesn't matter if you pedal fast, pedal slow. 
Yeah, maybe I should have given her that analogy or something. But yeah. it's annoying when they have this degree and they're in this position working for this big, you know, hospital company, yeah. mm-hmm. and you're telling them like, I've tried so hard to stay calm because I don't want to seem like a um, impatient, frustrated, you know, uh, patient of hers that are just like, ah, oh, she's young and eager to train, and she just she's um, kind of hopeless because she just wants to get back in the gym because she thinks at her age it's the whole like it's her whole world yeah and that's i feel like it's it could be a little condescending well you do wonder uh also because powerlifting isn't like known or respected if you were a gymnast going to nationals or the olympics oh, would yeah. this lady talk different oh absolutely not i, I mean absolutely they, they would talk different they yeah. would because part of their charge is to make sure that you're able to perform yeah not to not to try to intervene and yeah. try to gatekeep and say oh just you know you should not do this because you're you're fucking yourself up for yeah. life it's like olympic athletes fuck themselves up for life on the regular you know like all athletes yeah i mean if you're at the highest level of anything mm-hmm. m- moderation or your body's not going to be number one you know performance is number one yeah or should be uh, to, to run it back for a second though i'm wondering like what would it look like from a competitive standpoint if you were injured but you put out on social that you were particularly like your squat or whatever. And so you put your in your opener something relatively low and conservative or whatever, and then you know you can take a big jump on your second. So all your competitors have, have clocked your first um, your first weight. Mm-hmm. Stomp on them with your that, second. That is the I mean, numbers game that people play at uh, more competitive meets, which like you're, no one's really doing that at a local meet. There's kind of no reason to. But um, that's something like as you get closer to a meet, if you are in that top, like in the running for top five or something mm-hmm. on podium, um, people will hide their training. Like they will only post their last warm ups and yeah. not their yeah. top sets so that their competition doesn't know what to like kind of look for. Because when you do get to that top five, like your numbers might be actually very close to your competitors in certain lifts. So, um I don't know. At the end of the day, right, it's just like I'm going to perform as best as I could. And then my handler or coach, they're going to do the numbers game that I'm not going to no. worry about. They're going to play chess. Well, going back to back. the thing we're talking about, it, they're not even playing chess. They're playing checkers. Mm-hmm. Because if you literally need 450 to pull to win and you've only pulled 400, well, there's the f- you're not going to pull 450. There's, like, a, there's a false attempt thing where you force the hand. Of, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And I yeah, you the, move them up. Yeah. But even still, you know what I mean? Like, Truly, how you win meets is lifting the most weight, mm-hmm. and you cannot trick yourself to lift more weight. Yeah, you know what I mean. Again, like, but I can out strategize in volleyball. I can force Seabass to shoot the ball when he's had a bad streak. You can read these other things in other sports. Powerlifting, yeah, you can like that's still just a mind game. You it can is, play yeah. mind games, but you can't out trick somebody. And there isn't a really good way to be sure that they're going to do what you want them to do right. in response to you know what you threw out there. Um, uh, as an illusion, as yeah, a um, you can't even guarantee you're going to do what you want to do. Not exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it gives you that chance. And it I, does. And I, 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 I am defending or I'm thinking about the Arnold because it's essentially what happened. Yeah, yeah. To me, yeah, you're a little bit neck and neck. Yeah, I was neck and neck last deadlift, but our lot numbers like yeah. allowed me to go after she did. Right. Mm-hmm. So that. But imagine how, you had to pull your best pulls in meets four thirty. Well, then we wouldn't play the game. I know, but you know There's what no I mean. No, but play. some people still do. Yeah. Like, cause, cause, you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds, it, it, you don't always know exactly where your strength is, right? Strength isn't a bullseye that we can mm-hmm. visually know. It, we, you, we know you're in a range. Mm-hmm. All right, Abby can pull 420 to 450 today. But say you had to pull 455 or 460 to win, it's the like, stronger person wins. Yeah, you're yeah. taking the risk. Yeah, the stronger person just wins. But then, what if I'm, there's a flaw in my character as an athlete and they know that I am um, just highly competitive? And I, instead of letting my coaches handle this stuff, I'm like, no, do it. Like, whatever it is I need to pull. Yeah, yeah. Like, I sh- like fuck it. I'm going to, you know, go as balls to wall and, like, load whatever gives me the chance to win. And, you know, some people are like that. For sure. And some people convince themselves enough to, like, <laughs> yeah. end up pulling it off. You can get gas. You can definitely get gas. Gas yourself, yeah. For but, sure. like, uh, but it's just such a smaller yeah. range, you know? Yeah, it's very, very like mit, like tiny. Like if you if we ran a hundred of those meets or those scenarios, you versus I don't even know who whoever it was. Oh, let's just say though. So you versus we run a hundred of those, 
and like 50 of them were with coaches games and 50 of them were without coaches games mm-hmm. the percent that you win is still it's almost identical same, yeah, yeah yeah that's she, my point she i think she's stronger than me though I <laughs> but that's all just my point whereas if you run Keep Lakers, thinking that way that's yeah. a good thing to think if I mean, you run I lakers think, versus celtics 1988 Back to back a hundred times in each game, you have a different coach leading the way. Mm. The variance is going to be much greater. Yeah. Right. What you you rip out Pat Riley from some of them and throw in me and Seabass, we're going to lose more games. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm are pretty you good. Sticking at, your hair back. That's my, my question. No, my no, my basketball IQ is pretty good. But let, so that was a bad example. But you throw in some shitter, you know, it's it, because it, there's just more to manipulate. Right. Yeah. With powerlifting, there isn't much yeah. room. You can't out trick. Yeah. You can't out trick gravity. You're right. You can only do your best. You can just sniff ammonia. And mm-hmm. th- there are statistics about like the difference that coaches make in different professional sports. Like which one of them has the most? I forgot. I think we even talked about it. I on think here. we. I think we talked about it before. I NFL don't was pretty high. Yeah. I think NFL was pretty high. And which is like noticeable, like their coach, the movement in the NFL of of offensive, defensive, and lead coaches get traded all the time, or they're fired all the time. Hmm. You know, which is crazy. And you see the team's performance. Like, I guess if you follow a coach and you follow how their team does, is it fairly like consistent? Yeah, like the best coaches have had success on many different teams. I think that's really cool. Yeah, where in powerlifting you can't always show that. Because, right, like, you can have a shitty coach. Yeah, and and the strongest lifter ever. Yeah, or the opposite. You could have the best coach and a shitty lifter ever. And yeah, the coaches people talk about that yeah. all the time. So I don't know. Sometimes coaches take too much credit. Or I like, think that's very common. That is very common in all sports, but but even in powerlifting because there's so much on the individual and yeah. team sports. The coach really can strategize because like there's no. so many pieces. You With know? so many players, like you, we go on a group road trip and like everyone's head's cut off you know like you can't even control that situation yeah. so like imagine having 11 12 people on yeah. the field or core or whatever yeah there's a lot more skill to it yeah yeah i think nfl was near the top but i forgot C- college football yeah. is apparently like number one yeah yeah i mean it, it, but that's hard too because that has i guess both of them do have a factor per, when you go to professional sports or college recruiting is a piece of coaching so right. part of college being so impactful is that the best recruiters and the history of the game is, you know, Nick Saban in Alabama, for example. Mm-hmm. They have such a history that everyone wants to go play for them. So, of course, you're getting the best crop, and then maybe you're a really good coach. So the, the question is more in-game. Yeah, Which you can't isolate, because even at the professional level, there's recruiting, there's contracts. Yeah. Powerlifting is yeah. actually one of the better examples, because it's all amateur and it's you're choosing your coach. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, it's kind of an interesting play. Because, yeah, there's always recruiting and there's always politics. Right. And there's always money. I'm trying to see if I can find any kind of definitive st- before yeah. other than college. Uh, I remember seeing data, and I think it was college, then NFL, then NBA, then maybe MOB. I don't know if they talked about the MLS. Team sports. Yeah, team sports for yeah. sure. It's because it's hard with individual sports. Individual, right? yeah, individual is just. I think it's, it's so more, much on the person. I think it's more on the individual. Yeah, genetics, we, but also like you know their mindset and how they train and like their consistency. Look at the Olympic discipline. sports. You know, you like what's the shit where you ski and then you shoot some shit and then you ski again. What? You never seen that? <laughs> you seen that? Uh, whatever. Biathlon. Is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you never seen that. In the winter sports, you go skiing, and then you got to shoot like a bunch of targets, and you got to ski again. you never been biathlon curious? Are you serious? No. Are you serious? Yeah. That's but, a thing. But the point is, when we're talking about th- that, which I've watched, not I'm not a fucking fan, but I've seen it. They're not like, oh my God, she comes from the regime of Coach Smith, and he's winning all the, bipa- the, the bipartisan Mm-mm. ski events. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Bip- okay. <laughs> They're not talking about that. They're saying like, "Wow, she can ski real fast." Right, because only it's, it's an individual sport. But which, if you go to watch uh, basketball in the Olympics, you're like, "Oh, Kobe Bryant's leading Team America. He's with uh, his his favorite coach, Pat Riley, right now." Right. You know. And that's oh also, the, yeah, USA teams led by coach blah, blah blah blah. That's why they've had a lot of success lately. And I like that, and s- especially now with these bigger teams of powerlifting coaches. Um, I like that I have a low key coach because it's almost like me making a statement like you don't need the best coach in the world yeah. in order to do better. Or your best coach is uh, always not the best. 
best coach in the yeah, world. Yeah, that's that fucked. What you're oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> but, he's uh, not, and he knows that too because like it's just it's not his thing. He's a he's yeah, a pharmacist. Yeah. But either way, coach. he's a great coach. He's super knowledgeable. He's a great coach. But but the best coach isn't the one with the most athletes. It isn't the one most well known. It isn't the one with the strongest athletes. Right. Right. Yeah. Like I I think I could if I went all in I could be a top. Yeah. easily right now but i just don't have the time mm. and then it it would depend on the uh, amount of athletes i got that made me look good right yeah <laughs> yeah 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 definitely it's like who do you, who can you yeah. get on and then how do stable. i market that like even still yeah. i i am probably in the in the you know coin flip of top 10 who has like the most world records all time as a coach you know i have like two or three under my belt but I, it's how i market that and i'm not posting on instagram every day reposting my lifters Right. breaking world records saying like this is what we did for that you know it's all how you market too yeah and i'm not doing that anyway like no no matter what athlete i have if they like you know yeah i, I never once said we squatted 805 i would just <laughs> yeah i would just tell myself because i would die <laughs> what do you mean if i tried to squat 805 my athlete squatted 805 he, oh, he right, squatted, right, right. you know what i mean but they yeah. say we it wasn't right. a tandem lift. Yeah. I yeah. don't like yeah, I don't I don't like that phrase. And like if I if my athlete does very success is a very successful athlete, I would just think, okay, I'm not a bad coach. That's yeah. where the imposter syndrome. Yeah, I didn't comes fuck in. her shit up. It's like, damn, yeah. I'm not I'm not bad, right? Yeah. But that's kinda all you have to be as a coach. Yeah. You I'm have not... to not be bad. You have to allow them to be good enough to do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. And you have to not destroy their love of the support in the process of yeah, coaching. Or they're back. Make sure that they're still enjoying it. There's yeah. there's a lot to it for sure. But I'm yeah I'm not the best coach out there, it's and and you don't need the best. You're the coach best coach in here. In here, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, sure. Mikey's not coaching in here <laughs> right now. He's retired. Old and retired. So what do you got? Three weeks. Yeah. Four weeks. Three, four. Um, the fourteenth. Fourteenth. And what day is today? Eighteenth. A little bit less than four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Needless to say, I'm not ready. <laughs> no. you squatted Who, whoever okay. is. You squatted a little bit of weight yesterday. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, 70 kilos on Sunday and then 105 kilos yesterday. Yeah. And deadlift around the same, yeah? Deadlift around the same. No, deadlift is uh, around like 110, 115. Yep. But all so. this kind of came up in a week or two. So chances are it could probably go away a week or two. Yeah, people are saying like... I'm gonna watch your live stream chair for you. You're gonna be back. Like you're gonna hit PRs. Like you never know. I could. I'm like, damn. You could. Where'd you get that? Where'd you Where'd you get that hope from? It like, is possible though. And where can I find some? Because <laughs> I don't have any. I, it is better. I am a little more hopeful. And what sucks, I keep telling people this: when when you get injured, it's the hardest part is coming in and like having the hope. And I I will say I didn't have any. I, I honestly came in and trained because I felt like one, I have no option. Two, it's a habit. I've, yeah, yeah. I've done it for so long. You gotta like, show up and do something. I got. I'm gonna do it. Like I don't want to. It's not because I'm so motivated and I'm so um, dedicated to the sport and the love for it is just undying. Like no, that's yeah. not. I lost that for a second, okay? And it happens. And sometimes, like it, we really was just the routine of it that kept me in here. Yeah. Some people like to say, like, yeah, I was just so in love with this shit that I didn't let that stop me from mm, what well, did for me. And that's not the case for everyone, but. I want to make that transparent as well. Yeah. Zealotry at the beginning is easy, but it's hard to. Mm, yeah. It's definitely, I don't know. At this point, it's just to continue doing what I've been doing, no matter if I'm failing or whatever the waves, tides are going, um, to set myself up to give myself the best chance day of. Yeah. You know, that's, that's all it. you can do. That's really. Yeah. And if it goes great, awesome. If it goes bad, awesome. There's another meet down the future. Yeah. More meets to be had. Exactly. And I'll just approve myself on the next one. At least if I do bad on this one, I'll get people's hopes down. And then I'll like get out of the spotlight and then I won't feel as pressured. You know? Ma- managing expectations. Yes. that's Going all the way to Tennessee to manage expectations. Yeah. If I, honestly, like if I don't, if I can't like do anything really, I, I figured I wouldn't. At first I was like, yeah, I'll go through the movements and do whatever I can. But I realized, no, why? Well, I put that on the record when I know I wasn't going to. Yeah, be able to do anything. At least feel like a seven out of ten to compete. Right. Yeah. I. I. I think that's how I'm going to play. Yeah. Because you, you, even in the gym, right? You don't know until you load the bar. Mm-hmm. Right. And for you, even on game day, you won't know until you. Or you'll know if you're in the pocket. If you're in the pocket. Yeah. You don't know if it's a PR day or an OK day. You'll know if it's a bad day. But yeah, it's hard to predict the future. You know, in the warm ups, and you know even more. 
Yeah. You kind of got to get the first attempt. If in. I'm doing what I'm doing today, like if that's what's going to happen on meet day, I'd yeah, rather not. not. And not because I'm like, oh, she just didn't want to lose. She quit. It's like, you could decide that if you want to. But it's like, why am I going to put that on the record? Like, what is that going to do for me? Yeah, yeah, Really yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. if you can't squat above 70%. I'm going to just go have fun and eat. Yay. Yay. Memphis, barbecue. Is it vinegary? Is that their deal? Or is that Kansas? Because it's Memphis. I think that's South Carolina. Mem- Memphis, South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina a little bit. And then Texas. For what? Barbecue. Those are like the hubs. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what makes Memphis. Maybe more rub, less I, liquid. I didn't. There are like minor differences. Mm-hmm. I was not totally blown away. Like up. sweet versus. Texas, so. Where'd you go? Uh, Terry Blacks. You didn't like it? I, just, I didn't. It's not. I didn't say I didn't like it. Yeah, I just it wasn't just blown wasn't, away. I think uh, when you're from California, it's a little different. I guess. Well, because we have good food. If yeah. you're If you're from Michigan. Yeah, you're not having the Mexican food, the Asian food, the barbecue yeah. that we have in California. Yeah. You go somewhere special, it's going to blow your brains. And you're also world traveled. Yeah, so the, you've had food from a lot of good spots. You That's are world traveled. Yeah. So if you if you just yeah. ha- if you grew up and hang out in Wisconsin, yeah, you know, and then you go have like real barbecue, or even even other places, you know, like yeah, and you don't have like good ass Italian food. But California, yeah. you're pretty spoiled. Yeah, literally the best. Austin was the place that had the discada tacos. Those, yeah, that yeah. was so good. Yeah. And then, yeah, oh, yeah, so much depends on the spot, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll let you get to the doc's appointment. Where can people find you, dude, besides nationals on the 14th competing and smashing? Um, on Instagram, at avi.lu. And Third Street Barbell. And Third Street Barbell. Ladies and gentlemen, 3 sd Clothing needs. We got a brand new drop. Check it out right now. Hoodies, uh, my new favorite sweat shorts, some sweatpants to get you ready for the fall weather, uh, and a bunch of tees. So check that out through sbe.co. Uh, new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. And I'm Silent Mike. Where you want to find me? I am Matthew G. McD on all the social media. This show is 50% facts. What percent is a word and 50 is just numbers? Is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network. And we will get with you next time.